Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So um, I've had quite a lot of requests um, to show how I clean antique swords and this can be applied to modern swords um, or, or knives or all kinds of things um, and there are several different um, kind of stages to cleaning an antique sword and you have to make a decision about how much you want to clean something um, because obviously you don't want to remove uh, age patination in a lot of cases um, because you know if you remove signs of aging it can make something look kind of fake and a bit too modern and it's also removing some of the history of the of the object however there are many antique items which are immeasurably improved by um, by cleaning and um, if something has got active rust on it then very clearly you should be removing active rust what I'm not going to look at in this video is rust that is something I'm going to look at in a future video but what I'm going to look at here is where you get a sword that's not fundamentally rusty but it's just grubby and um, I through my website Eastern Antique Arms which I'll put a link to below this video I um, sell swords um, that I no longer want that I'm passing out of my collection or ones that have come to me and they're not for me or they're a bit too late in date or they're just not specifically fitting into my collection or sometimes I just need to sell stuff so that I can buy other stuff because I've seen something I really want um, and occasionally I have to part with swords that I like quite a lot but you can't keep all of the swords because I'd literally run out of space as you know I have quite a lot of swords I've got around a hundred swords uh, antique swords in my collection at the moment so I, there's only so much space in my uh, house and the various places I keep my swords um, so Essentially, there are um, items that pass through my hands that come to me in quite a grubby condition that I need to clean up a bit before I photograph them and put them on my website for sale. Um, and this is an example of something I haven't uh, decided whether I'm going to be keeping this one or selling this one yet. It's rather nice, in fact it's a very nice sword and rather unusual. It's actually, um, at, at first sight, nothing particularly um, surprising about it. It's an 1827 pattern rifles officer's sword and as you can see there the blade is pretty dirty but it's not rusty you can see that it's um, not really um, pitted it's in fairly decent condition but it's really grubby my guess it is that it's been sitting in someone's um, garage or attic or um, just a dirty house uh, for quite a while it's been uh, it does have a scabbard with it the scabbard is wood and leather um, and so that's protected the blade from rust um, but it is nevertheless very dirty and the other thing which makes this kind of really dirty surface on swords is people handling swords quite a lot and it, it creates a kind of grubby greasy oxidization especially if it's had oil on it first and then the oil gets old and uh, the other thing you sometimes find which leads to this kind of appearance is varnish and believe it or not uh, there was a time when it was quite fashionable to slap varnish on antique swords this is pretty grim, it's pretty nasty, uh, sort of gooey stuff, and varnish tends to go kind of browny, yellowy over with age over time. So it looks pretty grim. However, the good side of it is it does protect the blades from rust. So although the sword might come to you covered in varnish, and actually a surprising number of antique swords that I buy do have varnish on them. Um, despite the fact that it, it looks pretty nasty when it's on, once you clean it off, usually the steel surface has been protected pretty well underneath. Anyway, so what we have here is a really grubby blade, um, and I'm just going to show you the method that I use. It's very non-intrusive, it's non-destructive, um, it doesn't damage blades at all, it's very mild, and i found it's a very good way of bringing swords up to a nice surface uh, if they don't have rust on them. And again, I'll talk about rust in a future video. But so if you've got a grubby blade, um, then I hope you'll be able to see in this light, moving it from that to you can see where I've started cleaning here and where I haven't cleaned here. So how do I do that? Okay, well very simply I use a wheel, a buffing wheel. Um, I do have a grinding wheel and I intend at some point to mount my buffing wheel or mount a new buffing wheel on my grinding wheel. But at the moment I just use a drill mounted in a workbench, the same workbench that I recently broke incidentally. Um, so drill holding a buffing wheel um, mounted in a workbench. Very simple, lots of people would be able to do this at home. All you really need is a workbench and a drill. You could potentially even do it without the workbench just by holding the drill and securing the sword on something. Um, but I find it's easier to secure the drill in the workbench and move the sword and hold the sword. 
Um, the type of buffing wheel you want to use, I will leave up to you. I use a felt buffing wheel rather than a cloth buffing wheel. Generally speaking, to get the highest polish, you would want to use a cloth buffing wheel. However, I find the felt buffing wheel, because it's um, harder, it, you can be more precise about where, getting into nooks and crannies, you've got better edges with it, and you're more able to control what exactly you're polishing. It has a narrower um, edge, essentially, rather than the f um, cloth ones, which are quite big and thick, and they are more flappy at the edges. You can't be so precise about what you're buffing. And if obviously if I'm cleaning something that's next to uh, shark skin grip, for example, say I was buffing the back strap, I want to be quite um, precise about making sure I'm buffing the back strap and not running any risk of damaging the um, shark skin grip or the silver wire in this case, which are both in excellent condition, so I don't want to be buffing things I, I'm not so, supposed to be buffing, so to speak. Um, and the other thing is getting into nooks and crannies if you want to get down quite far down onto a blade it pays dividends having a felt wheel which you can get closer in with and it's got a harder edge on it um, however as I say lots of people use the cloth buffing wheels and uh, they have their own virtues you're more likely to get a higher polish for example with those because they're a softer material um, and uh, yeah let's have a look at my setup Hi guys, so here we've got my uh, buffing wheel. It's very bright sunlight outside today, so sorry it, it, everything might appear in silhouette here. Um, but we've got my drill. There it is. There's the buffing wheel mounted in. I'll just... Uh, there we go. I'll show you the wheel. So very simply, there we go. It's a fairly um, standard um, felt buffing wheel with a spindle at the back which mounts into this drill obviously you oh, which way is it that way there we go make sure you um, tighten that in so it's not going to um, shift around make sure that the drill is tightly clamped in your workbench so it's not going to fall out remember you're um, applying sideways upwards and downwards pressure to this bit so your drill wants to be securely mounted in the workbench you'll notice I'm wearing leather gloves um, I'll be honest, I have touched that buffing wheel with bare skin and it didn't do me any harm, So, um, but it's better to do it with gloves, largely because actually it protects you from the dirt. These gloves are absolutely covered in um, oil and nasty things, so uh, you'll get very dirty doing this without gloves on. Uh, it's also a good idea to wear safety goggles, glasses as always, and this is a polishing paste. I use a green one, just bought off Amazon. Uh, some people prefer white or various other red ones or such like. I find the green one works perfectly fine. First thing we do is we get the uh, wheel spinning and then I'm going to apply some uh, stick of this paste. Okay, You just do that by stroking it against the wheel when it's spinning. Okay, job done. So you can see, uh, you probably won't be able to see in that light unfortunately because of the bright sunlight on the floor which unfortunately I can't do anything about the sunlight folks, that's, uh, that's there. Um, but um, it's now got green paste all over the wheel so it's ready to go. And very simply, uh, you'll notice I use the hold, uh, when I put the trigger in I use the hold button on the drill to keep it spinning. Obviously I don't have to keep my hand on the drill. Um, and very simply, once I've got the drill going, I, um, I, I let it polish my blade. It's really, really simple. There's nothing... Uh, there's nothing complicated about it. One thing I would say is that when you're buffing like this, what you're actually doing, in essence, is um, you're, you're rubbing, okay? You're rubbing in one direction. Now, be wary of which direction the uh, wheel is spinning in because it might occasionally uh, shoot things off, okay? Um, and the other thing is occasionally alter the angle and the direction that it's rubbing in because the micro kind of rub marks will then be overlaid and you'll get a higher polish. Okay.
Okay, uh, one thing to watch out for guys when you're polishing um, steel blades is you don't want them to overheat. Um, now, you'd have to try really hard to get them to a heat whereby through simple um, buffing you got to a temperature where it would affect the temper of the blade. However, it is theoretically possible. The other thing to bear in mind, of course, is that the blades will get hot and that's another good reason to wear gloves uh, so that you don't burn your little fingers. Okay? Um, so, what we're going to do now is I'm going to move the camera so that you can maybe see the difference between where I've buffed and where I haven't buffed. I should also point out that the longer you buff, the more um, highly polished it will get. If you're patient, you can get something really like mirror polished like this, and I have mirror polished a cookery in this fashion. However, I tend not to do that with antique swords because I don't think it's, um, I think it could be detrimental to their value and aesthetic. Um, so what I tend to tr do is do it enough to clean them, uh, but then leave a degree of patination and marking on the blade that is, um, you know, relative to their age and use. Um, so yeah, I'll just move the camera so I can show you a little bit of the contrast between where I've cleaned and where I haven't. Hi folks, so here I am. Hopefully you can now see. So there's a portion of the blade here where I haven't cleaned. It's just got grubby residue all over it. And there is where I have been cleaning. The same thing on the other side where I've been cleaning and where I haven't yet cleaned. So huge difference and you see it's not at all damaging the sword because literally all I'm doing is I'm applying a um, you know the felt wheel to the surface of the steel and I'm buffing, buffing off all of that crap that's there. Um, but I'm not abrading the surface, surface, surface as such. Um, it's really just rubbing it. It's like rubbing it with a cloth um, a thousand times. You know, you're really you're just buffing the thing. Um, wire wool is more abrasive, much more abrasive than um, than this kind of felt wheel that I'm using is. Uh, wire wool would be fine on um, a rusty surface, but as soon as you've removed the active rust, you really want to switch to a cloth buffing or felt buffing wheel like I'm using. Um, so there we go, and as I mentioned, I could, you saw I only did this for a few minutes, a couple of minutes at most, um, and the more I did that, the, the um, more and more of the little marks, if I, there we go, these little marks, um, that could be from anything, could be from rain that settled on, on the blade at some point or whatever, um, the more and more of them that would kind of rub out essentially. So you could absolutely bring this blade back up to a completely flawless um, kind of mirror polish. Uh, and incidentally you can do this on guards, you can do it on the back strap, anything made of metal. And it will work on brass, aluminium, steel, absolutely anything. Remember the softer the material that you're buffing, the quicker it will polish up. So if you're doing something like brass, for example if a guard is brass, I generally don't use the buffing wheel on brass guards because it tends to over polish them and it just looks like they've just been, <laughs> it looks like they've been over polished um, and it, it gives them a slightly kind of fake look. Although it's how they would have looked new, it's not always desirable for antiques. Um, so there we go guys, uh, you can see uh, on my website, uh, Eastern Antique Arms, I'll put the link under here, you can see examples of swords I've got for sale at the moment. Most of the swords I sell I don't clean uh, beforehand, or if I do clean them it's a very minimal. Um, I don't usually go to the effort of um, buffing swords up like this unless I'm going to keep them in my collection, partly because some people just prefer the aged uh, patina. Um, so I just let them choose uh, and uh, this is hopefully a useful video for those people who want to start cleaning up their own swords. All you need is a drill and a, a buffing wheel um, and preferably a workbench um, and a pair of gloves and either glasses or goggles are a good idea as well. You will get bits uh, flying off the wheel. The wheel will def um, over time work. Uh, work its way down, like rub its way into oblivion essentially because you're rubbing away some of the felt fibres um, when you're actually polishing the blade. Um, if the polishing compound that you use leaves any kind of black gunk on the blade, don't worry about that. It will either rub off with a cloth or if you want to do it a bit quicker, just spray some WD-40 or other lubricating oil on the surface and that kind of dissolves it to an extent. So you spray the WD-40 on the blade and then wipe it off, have a dirty rag, wipe off the, the gunk with the dirty rag and then use a clean dry rag to buff and you'll end up with a nice um, polished surface. So there we go guys, um, and maybe at a later point when I've finished cleaning this sword, I'll show you what it looks like finished. Cheers folks! 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.